We are finally ready to start Chapter 12, which is the last full chapter we'll have for Chem 101. We'll get a little bit into 13, but Chapter 12 is the last one we do a complete survey of. We'll start with definitions of acids and bases. Most students are familiar with the Arrhenius definition of acids and bases. This is very specific to water. An Arrhenius acid would be something like nitric acid, which when we put it in water would make a hydrogen ion and a nitrate anion. So acids produce hydrogen ion in water. Arrhenius bases would be something like potassium hydroxide, which when placed in water would be soluble and would make potassium cation and hydroxide anion. So bases produce hydroxide in water. And most students are familiar with neutralization. This is when a hydrogen ion and hydroxide come together to make water. If you're going to organic chemistry, you should be familiar with the Lewis definition of acids and bases, which works in any solvent. For the Lewis definition, we actually focus on electron pairs. A Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor. That means somewhere on the molecule we're able to accept electrons. A Lewis base is an electron pair donor. Let's focus on the Lewis acid definition first. The Lewis acid has an atom in it which generally has less than four electron regions. It also helps if that atom is partially positive because we're trying to attract electrons which are negative. So when I look at this first compound, aluminum chloride is an ionic compound. But when it's placed in organic solvent, it can form bonds that try to become covalent so that it can become more soluble. You may notice the aluminum has a partial positive charge and only three electron regions around it. So the aluminum atom in this compound functions as a Lewis acid. If we look at carbon dioxide, the carbon and the oxygens have less than four electron regions. But the carbon is partially positive, so that will be attractive to electrons, making the carbon a Lewis acid in carbon dioxide. If we look at formaldehyde here, this carbon has less than four electron regions, it has three of them, and it's partially positive. So the carbon in formaldehyde is also a Lewis acidic site. What about Lewis bases? These are electron pair donors. And by that we mean they are willing to donate the electrons to make a bond with something. So in looking at this first molecule, it's generally a good idea to not consider the halogens as Lewis bases, if you have something else that's better, which we do in this phosphorus. This phosphorus has a lone pair on it, and it would be willing to make a bond with another compound or molecule. So the phosphorus in this molecule is the Lewis base site. For our next molecule, you can see that nice lone pair on the nitrogen, and you know that that nitrogen is willing to do some hydrogen bonding with other molecules, so this nitrogen would be our Lewis base on the molecule. For this last molecule, formaldehyde, we said the carbon was our Lewis acid site, the oxygen is our Lewis base site. It's willing to hydrogen bond with other molecules. The best way to recognize a Lewis base is that it generally has lone pairs that it's willing to share with another atom. Here's an example of why you might want to know about Lewis acids and bases. If you ever find yourself in the situation where you're in manufacturing or going on to organic chemistry, Sometimes you need 
a molecule that is a Lewis acid to polarize something that is nonpolar, like Cl2, so that you can substitute a hydrogen on a benzene ring. There will come a day where some of you will recognize the term electrophilic aromatic substitution. Lewis acid base reactions happen all the time very naturally. Standing water is actually a little bit acidic. It's not pH 7. That's because there's a reaction between carbon dioxide and water. Here's an example of how this works. We have a Lewis base here in the water where it has a lone pair. We have a Lewis acid in the carbon dioxide in which the carbon is partially positive and attractive to electrons. So what do we do? The water reaches out with its lone pair toward that carbon. It forms a bond. Now, of course, carbon can't have five bonds, so if we're going to form a bond here, we need to kick out a bond here to leave our carbon with four bonds. Here we have the new bond, and the previous bond has become a lone pair. So the Lewis base has attacked the Lewis acid, and this can continue. This water is still floating about and takes a look at this molecule right here and says, you know what, that oxygen is somewhat positive. Let me relieve that. So the lone pair of the water kicks out and grabs onto that hydrogen. And of course, hydrogen cannot have two bonds, so that means this bond breaks and the lone pair falls back to oxygen. The oxygen is functioning as a Lewis acid. It is a lone pair acceptor. So now we are to hydronium ion and bicarbonate. We formed a new bond with hydrogen to make the hydronium, and this hydrogen has let go. So now we're at bicarbonate. This is in equilibrium. And we can do one further reaction if we'd like. The lone pair of oxygen as a Lewis base can reach out to grab that hydrogen. So the hydronium ion lets go of it, and we are left with carbonic acid and water. Now I would love to be in the lecture hall and show you myself blowing a straw through water and making the water turn from a neutral indicator color, which is typically yellow, to an acidic color indicator, which is more orange or red. I can't be there, so I found an equally exciting demonstration. Here is some pure water, which has a pH of 7, shown by using this testing paper and matching to the color on the side of the box. If I take a straw and blow into the water, what gases are going into the water? The one I'm interested in is carbon dioxide, which can dissolve in water and react to form an acid. Carbon dioxide reacts with water to make carbonic acid, which in turn breaks into hydrogen ions and hydrogen carbonate ions. So after I blow into the water several times, I should have a solution which is more acid than it was before. Let's check by testing the pH of the solution. It's now closer to 5 than it was the 7 as pure water. pH 5 is an acid, so the carbon dioxide has dissolved in the water and reacted. Thus, my chemical reaction really has made hydrogen ions in the water, meaning that the carbon dioxide gas dissolved and reacted. Carbon dioxide made hydrogen ions. What does this mean about rain which passes through air with carbon dioxide in the air? It is amazing how chemistry lecture halls worldwide appear to look the same. 
So here is your question. Select an atom that is a Lewis base. You're looking for lone pairs on an atom that is willing to share. And yes, there are two possible answers. How about this question? Let's select an atom that is a Lewis acid. We're looking for an atom that has less than four electron regions, and it helps if the atom is partially positive. Again, there are two answers, although one is a much stronger Lewis acid than the other. Our last definition of acids and bases is the Bronsted definition, which focuses on protons. What is a proton? Well, imagine a hydrogen atom which has one proton and one electron. If we remove the electron, we're left with a hydrogen ion, which typically we simply call a proton. A Bronsted acid is a proton donor. A Bronsted base is a proton acceptor. So let's take a look at some examples. Here is the molecule HClO2. You'll see that in many acid molecules, the hydrogen is typically attached to the oxygen. This hydrogen is already partially positive, so it's already on its way to almost being a proton. All we need to do is break this bond. We would call HClO2 a proton donor or Bronsted acid. Now let's get a base. This could be a Bronsted base because the lone pairs on the oxygen are ready to reach out and grab that proton to accept it. So how does this reaction work? The electrons on the oxygen reach out and grab the hydrogen to make a bond. And the bond that we had to hydrogen lets go. And the electrons belong to the oxygen. So let's take a look at how the bonds change when we do this. We're going to reach out and make a bond and let go. So the lone pair becomes a bond. This line in blue is our new bond. Notice this is a good Lewis structure. We've got an octet around the oxygen. This bond lets go. It becomes a lone pair. And maybe you recognize a Lewis structure that you've drawn before. This is the chlorite ion. So if we write the net reaction, we've got HClO2 plus hydroxide. And when we're finished, we have ClO2 one minus and H2O. This reaction is a reversible one. So if we want to go backward, the lone pair of this oxygen can reach out and grab the hydrogen, and this bond lets go to make a lone pair. So this is what we call a net acid-base equation. So in summary, for acids and bases, a Lewis acid is the most general definition. Acids are electron pair acceptors, and bases are electron pair donors. Bronsted focuses on the proton where the acid is a proton donor and the base is a proton acceptor. And Arrhenius definitions focus on water. The acid is indeed still a proton donor, but the base produces hydroxide in water.